Hey, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Very honored to be here tonight. My name is Sean Ward, Sean L. Ward, and I am a candidate for mayor of the city of East Cleveland in this upcoming election. Uh, I, some of you have gotten a copy of my platform, uh, but if, if you didn't get a copy, uh, you can always go to my website, which is www.slward, the number four, ecmayor.org. And you can see the platform there. Again, that's SL Ward, the number four, ecmayor.org. You can check out the platform there. So, I'm a 1983 graduate of high school. Family moved to East Cleveland in, in 1972. So I've seen a number of changes uh, in East Cleveland. I grew up on Beersford, and if you're familiar with East Cleveland, you know that Beersford is right in the back of uh, the police station. So I had, um, growing up, a lot of interactions with police. You know, they would come out and play ball with us, take us, you know, to school. And East Cleveland had a tradition back then where, you know, you just didn't come to East Cleveland and commit crime. Uh, and, and people felt safe. And, and I think that we've got to get back to that. We've got to get back to uh, an, a, a community where, where people feel safe. Now, one of the things that I want to do as mayor is revitalize East Cleveland. I want to create an economy that will stabilize a tax base in East Cleveland, that will allow us to grow city services to a level where we are being proactive as opposed to reactive. And I want to encourage businesses to come into East Cleveland, not just the traditional businesses that, that are there today, but, but new businesses, high-tech businesses, businesses in, in STEM, in science, technology, and engineering, and mathematics. And, and I want to encourage home ownership. I want to provide a path for renters to become homeowners. I want the current homeowners to feel that their investment is safe and that they have something that they can pass on uh, through, throughout generations that, it, that will continue to, to grow in value and not devalue because everything around it is also devalued. But in order for this to happen, people have to feel safe when they come to the community. Businesses have to feel safe that when they come into the community, their businesses are gonna be protected, their businesses are gonna be secure. The people that come to work are going to be safe going and coming. We want to encourage people to come and live in the community, not just come in and work. Well, if you're going to do that, you have to keep them safe longer than just nine to five. So they have to feel safe when they're out in the community. They have to feel safe going home. Right. And, and we also have to create an environment where their children feel safe, where their children can move around, can play, can walk from one neighborhood to the next without worrying about what's gonna happen and whether or not they're gonna make it home. East Cleveland has beautiful parks, some beautiful recreation areas, but if we're more worried about what's gonna happen to my child when they go to the park, guess what? They're probably not gonna to go to the park. So we need to fix all that, we need to fix all that. And, and it's gonna happen through community effort and through partnership. Mm -hmm. So I'm here tonight speaking to you about East Cleveland, but I'm in Cleveland. And you all are here listening to me, and I don't know whether you all are from East Cleveland or whether you're from Cleveland, but you're listening. I have your attention. I can look out and I can tell. And so now that I have your attention, guess what? I better have something to say behind me. Otherwise, I've wasted our time. So I'm here today to tell you that this is Cleveland, but we're right around the corner. We're neighbors. As our safety goes, so do yours. If, if, if we're border communities, crime can cross the street and end up in the Collinwood area just as easily as it can cross the street and end up in East Cleveland. So we've got to work together to protect our communities. We've got to protect our children. We've got to protect our women. We've got to protect our young men. 
In short, we've got to protect each other. And then, and then we can look to other people to support what we're doing. Not to own it, not to control it, but to support it. Because it won't happen alone. Now, East Cleveland, uh, you know, a lot of things happen in East Cleveland. A lot of people have opinions about East Cleveland. There's a lot of rumors going on right now, a lot of speculation about things going on in East Cleveland. But East Cleveland is still a, a vibrant community. It's still a community that people love, people are committed to. There are people who have been in East Cleveland for generations. And, and my goal as the next mayor of East Cleveland is to allow that to continue. We have some of the most beautiful architecture in the world in East Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And we need to do something to bring that back to life. The solution is not always tear it down. That may be the solution sometime right. after all other uh, avenues are exhausted. But that can't be the first solution. East Cleveland has historic value. We need to exploit that. We need to get on national registries so that our community is preserved and protected on the federal level. We need to ask for dollars on the state, local, and federal level, on the county level. We need to take advantage of the monies that are available to us through the various programs. And as mayor, I'll look into all of those things. We, we, we uh, live in a, in a dark community in East Cleveland. We got issues with street lights. One of the ways to encourage safety is not to start screaming about, you know, I'm gonna run all the criminals out of the city and, and you know, we're gonna throw a bunch of people in jail. Uh, that's, that's not necessarily the way to go. That's, that's a reaction, right? That's a reactionary position. Mm -hmm. We want to be preventative, right? We want to have foresight. We want to have forethought. So we need to figure out how to encourage safe environments, safe spaces. Make our neighborhoods lit. Get street lights. Get solar street lights, right? So you're killing two birds with one stone. Not only are you getting street lights, you're taking advantage of advanced technology. You're lowering your electrical costs because you're using solar energy, and your streets are illuminated. We need to revisit our traffic pattern. Make sure we got traffic lights in the right place. Make sure we got stop signs where they should be. Those, those little things. We need to be a visible community. We need to not only see what's going on, but then we need to be able to tell people what's going on without fear of retribution. We need to have a police force that we have confidence in, that reflects the community that is served. On all levels, we need to be comfortable that the people who are charged with our protection are properly trained, properly qualified, properly certified. We need to make sure that they hold the right positions and that they're qualified to hold those positions. And so one of the things I'll do as mayor is I'll review all of those positions, all of those job descriptions, all of the certifications, all of the education requirements. And if they're not met, they'll have an opportunity to meet them. If they don't meet them, we'll have recourse. And we'll make good use of that recourse. See, I'm coming in clean. I like to say, I don't know nobody, so I don't owe nobody. I'm checking them all out. And if they don't fit, they gotta go. Right, right. It's just that simple. But I'm not gonna make any assumptions. I'm not gonna make any prejudgments, because I don't know. Today, I'm a regular citizen just like everyone else. But tomorrow, hopefully that'll change. And then we'll, we'll do things to make people feel safe. One of the things I believe in is community policing. I want to encourage officers to live in East Cleveland. And if they live in East Cleveland, we need to find a way for them to take police cars home. I'm sure we have a fleet of older cars that we can allow officers to take home so that there's police presence in the community. 
so that people know, hey, an officer lives right there. Believe me, that helps. We've got to have businesses in the community that support the safety and encourage safety in the community. Now, if, if we're going to have 24-hour gas stations, then, you know, we need a reason for gas stations to be open for 24 hours. If you don't have a reason for a gas station to be open 24 hours, then maybe you need to see a little bit, uh, look a little bit more into what goes on in that gas station over the 24-hour period. And maybe it needs to not be open for 24 hours. Maybe it needs to not be open at all. Another thing, hotel. I think East Cleveland has two or three hotels. Why? Four hotels. Why? Nobody comes to East Cleveland to stay overnight for business. Because we don't have any business. So why are there hotel motels in East Cleveland? Ain't no holiday in. <laughs> That's right. And Sugar Hill Gang ain't there either. So, 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 so we know, we speculate around what's going on there, but we need to know. Because some things can be happening to our babies in those hotels. Human trafficking, drug trafficking. People come to hide out. A few weeks ago, there was a a, a pursuit at, at one of the hotels for, for a fugitive from justice. If criminals feel comfortable coming to East Cleveland to hide, something's wrong. That's a problem. That's a problem we need to fix. And so I need partnerships with, with organizations such as this who can help me, who can give me guidance, who can tell me about some of the things that are going on, some of the things I should look out for and some of the things as a community we should put in place. You folks are out on the front line. I see you. I see you on the news. I read about you in the paper. You guys do great things. I remember when Black on Black Crime started in the, in the uh, complex between Page and Wymore in East Fleet at the Superfly Barbershop, I believe. I used to get my hair cut at Superfly when I had hair. <laughs> but, but, you know, we all remember some good things about East Cleveland. And I'm not suggesting that we go back, right? Because those times are over. The world is different. We can't go back. The question is, how do we go forward? What do we look like as we move forward? Right? We can't start over every four years. We've got we've to put someone in office that we have confidence in. We've got to put someone in office with a plan. And, and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm building my plan. See, my plan doesn't depend on whether or not I get in office. Because if I get in office, I need to be ready to execute my plan. I'm a project manager by trade. So that's what I do. I build plans and I execute them. On time and on budget. Because if I didn't, I wouldn't be a project manager. Somebody would have fired me a long time ago. But I've been doing that for 30 years. So I know how to do it. All right? So this is, you know, my first run at, at mayor. But, you know, being a mayor is made up of many things. And I have many of the many things. And, and so what I want to do is use those many things to be the next mayor of East Cleveland and to bring the change that East Clevelanders so deserve. Because I am an East Cleveland. I'm a son of East Cleveland. My slogan is a product of the past with a plan for the future. And I am a product of the past. Shaw High School graduated me and prepared me to go on to do the things that I did. Now it's time for me to come back and repay that debt. And I'm repaying that debt with both gratitude and sincerity. 
<laughs> because I like the way I turned out. I like the way Shaw High School prepared me. And I want yeah. other people right. to have that same opportunity. But again, they got to feel safe. They got to feel secure. And most importantly, they can't fear change. We have got to give them, give the people of East Cleveland ownership in the changes that are gonna take place. We've gotta ask them, what do you want? What do you need? What do you think is gonna be best for you and best for the community? And then when we ask them and they tell us, then we do it. And then we ask them to come back and tell us if we're doing it right. We can't be afraid to fail. What we should fear is pretending like we're having success when we're not. Fail early so that you can recover. Fail late and you're doomed. So, I, I again, just, just want to ask you to partner with me to help revitalize East Cleveland, to make East Cleveland a safe and beautiful community where people can live, work, and play, to make East Cleveland a once again vibrant community and bring businesses back to East Cleveland, give, give people uh, you know, reason to get up in the morning, hope for their city, make East Cleveland a destination and not just some place you ended up because you had no other option. East Cleveland doesn't deserve that, and neither do the people who live in East Cleveland. They don't deserve that reputation. There's more to East Cleveland than what we see on the news, than what we see on the internet, than what we hear about and, and, and what we read about. But a lot of times you can't tell because sometimes the blockers are so thick that you can't see around them. And then you start to wonder. Then you start to lose confidence. And that's where we are today. And that's why I'm here today. To restore the confidence. To act in full transparency. To act in full partnership, not only with the citizens of East Cleveland, but with the communities that surround East Cleveland. Because that's how we change our community. I want to thank you all for listening to me tonight. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. And I hope to speak to you again uh, uh, while I'm on the campaign trail. Have a good evening. Thank you.